Offensively. From L3. Big rebound collected by Mensa. Off to Johnson. Cutting and slamming his Butler. Let's go, Jalen! Yes, sir! We are so connected to both ends of the floor. We're going to be hard to beat. If we find the team to beat us, we'll tip our hats to them. But right now, that team, we haven't seen that team. Free ball when they drive towards the basket. Watch Miller, out. he put it behind his back. It's taken away by Butler. Love it up. Oh. Put it down. Big finish. Keyshawn Johnson rising up. Seed in the South, number one overall seed is down. Trammell floats it up. Teardrop. He's got 19 points. Watch out. Oh, immense meeting at the rim. Gets rejected. Again. Another. This time it's Johnson. Quinterly gets to the cup, oh. and it's blocked by Mensa. Eighth block of the night for the Aztecs, and they can taste it. San Diego State has done it for the first time in school history. They're going to the Elite Eight. Butler, get it in. A rope, hands it to Trammell. Three seconds, two seconds. Trammell drives. He's fouled. Darion Trammell will go to the free throw line for the lead. San Diego State up by one. They've determined it's over. For the first time in school history, San Diego State is going to the final four. With five to shoot, taken on. And it's blocked. Pulled down by Mensa. They have the one timeout. Are they going to take it or not? They don't have the scores on the floor. It's Butler with two seconds. He's got to put it up. Butler levanta el doble en camino. ¡Sí! ¡Increíble! The right wing with three seconds. Butler in the corner with one second. Hoist the jumper. It's good! It's good! Lamont Butler sends San Diego State to its first national championship game. Got to the right baseline with two, with one. Butler, jumper for the win, and he made it. San Diego State is going to the national championship game. Who's going to the championship game? Not FAU. No, no, no. The San Diego State Aztecs are going to the NCAA championship game on Monday. A San Diego State miracle. Now the journey... It ends right here. So without any contact. He was trying to draw the contact. Steal here. Exactly. Right hands. Look at Butler. Butler. <laughs> Abel. You lay it in. And you knew it was right around. Dutch. What a year he's had to. Early and the Huskies have their dreams come true. Welcome back to another episode of the Sons of Montezuma Kiss the Rings podcast. It is your host, Mateo San Diego. You can find me at Mateo San Diego on Twitter. And, of course, Sons of Money all over social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all that good stuff. We are fresh back from the Final Four and the National Championship game. Uh, I guess I could say fresh. I'm still hurting a little bit. And I'm so glad that both of my co-hosts are filling up to the task to join me today. You cannot stop him. You can only hope to contain him. He is known as Feaster Damas. We call him the SD Sports Fiend. What is up, Fiend? Good to see you. It is good to be back in San Diego, man. But we had a blast in Houston. I had the time of my life there. We took our journey together from San Diego to Vegas to Houston. And boy, I, I you're right. I, I miss Houston. I miss being out there with all the excitement, just everything going over all over in Houston and all over town. I, I really do miss it, but it's great to be home. 
back in my own bed and you know just hey it's great to be home mike mike tortola you joined us out there for the championship game a Michael. happy belated birthday to you as well hey, sorry we couldn't get you that championship for your birthday but man uh, it was really good to see you out there come out and just kind of get to see for yourself the final four atmosphere out there how are you doing man Good, man. Good, man. Thanks for the birthday wishes. Appreciate it. Um, no, it was fun, man. It was good. Uh, as soon as he hit that shot on Saturday, I was crying, freaking out. And I was like, I got to go, man. I can't. You know, I was I was like, if I go, they haven't won when I'm not there. So that's kind of like always in the back of your mind, like, dude, do I want to go? But there's no way I can miss a national championship game if your team's in it. That's just crazy. Like, you know, it seems like a lot of people did that. So it was cool. It was fun to see everybody and, and a lot of people I saw and stuff. And it was only like two nights. I didn't get to see, see you guys too long, but I'm glad I won. It was a it was a it was an incredible experience. So while we were out there, um, we got the opportunity to record and just want to give again another another big shout out to Todd. And hey, everybody there at the Republic Boot Company. They opened their doors after that game winning shot by the butler right uh we met todd out there he's an alum and he said man let's go let's go have you guys record at the boot shop it's it's a notorious place there in houston a, a really you know just when you think of texas you think of cowboy boots hats the rodeo all that good stuff country music so definitely everybody if you haven't watched that go check us out on youtube our live stream that was on sunday night we did that and so we did get a chance to talk a little bit there but you know now that the national championship game is over of course the Aztecs suffered their loss to UConn, 76 to 59. You know, it just gives us an opportunity, us three, as the Kiss the Rings crew to kind of reconnect and, and you know, talk about everything that happened because it was an amazing, amazing experience. You know, this whole March madness. Guys, we were talking throughout the season and, you know, towards the end of the year after the Mountain West tournament, I think each one of us probably would have been satisfied had we gotten one, two wins in the tournament to go on this incredible run that the team did in March and to top it off with the final four there in Houston. What can you say, Fiend, about the atmosphere that we stepped into there at Houston? It was electric. I mean, and it was such a huge stage. I mean, I love going to the Mountain West Conference Championship, mm -hmm. but have, after having ex experienced that Final Four Championship, I mean, it makes the Mountain West Conference Championship look like the Red Roof Inn compared to the Waldorf Astoria. <laughs> I mean, because it was just, I, I mean, I, I was blown away by it. Just absolutely blown away. Mike, when you came in, you came in that that following day. I mean, were you shocked to see how much support, how many Aztecs fans were there? Awesome, dude. Like it was awesome. So I got up and I, I went over to the fan fest. By the way, if you if even if your team's not in the fan fest uh, in the final four, take your kids to the fan fest one year. It's incredible. I was just all I could think of. And I, you know, having a kid now and, and, and nephews. It was perfect for little kids, you know, seven to 10, 12, whatever, for all the games you guys went. So it's it's an awesome experience to go if you get a chance. And that was great to walk around and see all that. And it's it's like, yeah, it's like the Vegas tournament on steroids. You know, you get to see, you know, I saw Michael Cage, nicest guy in the world, man. He goes, hey, I love your stuff when he saw the, 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 the shirt. So which was cool to, to see that. And then, you know, I saw one of the guys that was in Top Gun, dude one of the pilots. <laughs> and I went up to him and I said, Hey man, you know, I'm from San Diego. My uncles are fighter pilots, you know, thank you for making this movie. And he, you know, he was very nice and polite and really guys, nice guy and stuff like that. And, but the amount of people there was ridiculous. So, you know, I, I looked and I felt like it was all Aztec fans, all Aztec fans. And and then I saw a couple of buddies, Bill and Bo at before the game with, with Bagness. And, but when I went to the game, there was a ton of Yukon fans too. Like when they ended up winning, I mean, the amount of fans went, went crazy was a lot. So it was a good mix of fans for both teams. But yeah, I was I, I wasn't really surprised considering the San Diego sports town being starved for a championship for people to be like, hey, dude, we may not ever get this again. Let's go. You remember the games. We also remember a lot of that stuff we do together as boys um, yeah. more so. But, you know, it, it's it, it was awesome, dude. But yeah, I mean, 72,000 people in that stadium was ridiculous. 
you know, that camaraderie that is built on these road trips to these type of events, you know, just a big, a big thank you to SDSU official, the athletic department. This was their first chance at a final four. Right. And I think they just put on just spectacular events for us fans that were there where there was the, the Friday night mixer. And I'm sure those that got the package deals on Saturday and Sunday, they had a blast as well. I mean, so many alumni legends, like you said, Mike, uh, Michael Cage. I mean, everybody saw, you know, whether it was X Thames or Jamal or, you know, Malachi Flynn. And I mean, geez, Jordan Shackled, so many you can think of there at the tailgate. We were seeing football, football guys, current football guys, right? Jesse Matthews, Caden McDonald, you know, uh, the list goes on, man. I mean, it was just an amazing time for Aztec Nation to get together and celebrate no matter what happened. This was just like uh, it was like a homecoming event just in Texas. You know, we took over. So to, big shout out to everybody on, on staff for, for just maximizing this opportunity to put San Diego State on the forefront. It, it was already the game was already going to be on national television and seen all over the world. But if you were there, man, it was just uh, I can't even explain it. It is it, something I'll never, ever forget. Uh, also, a big credit to not only SDSU official, but all the other outlets that were out there covering the team, whether it was, you know, the UT, KPBS, um, you know, all the news channels, EVT, uh, Aztec Breakdown. We got a chance to meet those guys out there, which was really cool to celebrate with them. And just everybody, Aztec Nation as one, you know, just pulling forward the guys and, and just celebrating out there. So it, it takes a lot of effort for everybody to make that trip. And man, it was just great to see everybody. So. Yeah, I got on. to meet Yaris too. And he was, I got to spend some time with him. So that was fun to finally meet him and, and hang out with him and his wife. So I had I enjoyed spending some time with him. I guess we're not saying his last name right. He said it, but I can't remember. It's not Min. He'll have to ask him again, but it's, it's <laughs> Minyaris. And he's like, no, it's it's a little different. So it's a little, tw- I, 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 you'll have to ask him to, to tell it to you again. He told it to me once or twice when I had a few beers in me. Oh. You guys need to, to walk us through that game, bro. Like you two need being there, you get. I want to hear your recollection of that game. Like whatever you want to do on that game, because I know I was going crazy. FAU, yeah, of course, right. Well, here's the thing, you know, I I I came in thinking, okay, the thrill of victory, the agony of defeat. That to me sums up, you know, that that's one of the ways I sum up this Final Four trip is because that game against FAU was just the thrill. It's the greatest sports moment in San Diego State history. And maybe even in, in San Diego sports history. I've heard people say that. But for sure, San Diego State history. I mean, that game, we had, we, I'm not going to say we had no business winning that game because we did. And we obviously did pull it out. But we were behind by 14 points in the second half. I mean, everything looked like it was imploding. Micah Parrish gives a little tap elbow. The guy goes down. They're looking at the screen. I mean, just seven points off of free throws in, in like a, a one and a half minute stretch there during that time. And I'm thinking this, this we're imploding. It's, it's, this is, we're going home. One game, we're going home. I, I got to spend, you know, two more days here in Houston and figure out, you know, how I'm going to cope with this loss because you never want to lose that first game. And Fiend, we were there, you, me, and Dan, we're there with, you know, surrounded by Aztecs fans in a sea of, of Aztecs fans. And it just felt like we were just willing them, yelling, screaming. It, you felt like you had an impact in that comeback. I mean, every single free throw was crucial. We missed a lot of them. And then we were getting these rebounds off of them. Matt Bradley was just grabbing these rebounds. That, to me, was the biggest part of that comeback, was getting all the rebounds, him and Ladee. How, how do you explain, you know, that comeback and, and that feeling? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> it, it didn't look good there when we were down 14, you know. And and then Micah Parrish, as he usually does, I mean, he hit a couple of big threes that, you know, kind of uh, closed the gap a little bit. And I remember I just, I kept telling you, we just need to chip away. Just keep chipping away. Let's get it to like, I don't know, like 10 with like 10 minutes left. Like, let's just, let's just keep chipping at this lead, you know? And we, and we did, we, we, we whittled down that lead or that deficit that we were in. <clears throat> and, you know, Ladie hit some big shots um, late in that game. And, and it seemed like everyone, everyone, just stepped up at some point, you know, and, and, and made a big play. And then down the stretch there, I mean, we covered this on the the podcast at the boot company, but I was telling you that 
that we were going to get a stop. I just knew we're going to get a stop. Ball's going to go into Butler's hands, and he's going to go coast to coast like Tyus Edney. And he didn't go coast to coast like Tyus Edney and lay it in, but he 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 reversed it and pulled up like Jordan and knocked down a 18-foot jumper for the win. And um, it's probably the most iconic shot ever. And, well, it definitely was the shot of the tournament for sure. And it's one of the best final four shots, even though it came in a semifinal game. Um, and definitely it's the most iconic San Diego state shot. Um, I, I can't even tell you what would have been second. I mean, maybe the Flynn's shot against San Jose state. Um, it just doesn't compare though. It just I mean, it just compare. does not. No, not at all. No. I mean, this, uh, if they don't put this photo that's in like the backdrop of my zoom background here, like somewhere at the jam center, I mean, that has to hang up there at the jam center. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, I mean, we talk about that game in, in those terms. It's it's the greatest moment in San Diego state sports history. Like there's no doubt about it. Um, that shot was so pure. I mean, Mike, you, you summed it up great in the video. I mean, he looked like Jordan there. He did look like Jordan there. And the elation of that place going up. And then you get out of the game and you're checking your phone. You're seeing everybody back in San Diego going nuts. Every sports bar is going crazy. People outside down around Peco Park are, are losing their minds. You know, we talked about this already, but when we sum up this Final Four experience, you know, UConn may have won the championship, but San Diego State won the tournament. We absolutely won the tournament we won the hearts and the minds for that one weekend that shot was the one shining moment of the tournament when you think of this year's tournament that's the shot you think of and it was from our guy i can't say that san diego sports has ever had uh that legendary of a moment in the national eye yeah i mean maybe the garvey home run in 84 you know that might be up there. I mean, a, a lot of our a lot of people listen to it, but in terms of San Diego State, there's no doubt that that's the number one. You know, that is the number one San Diego sports, mo San Diego State University sports moment. I think of all time, and he will always be compared to Jordan. That will be a comparison with him and Jordan forever. The way he just brought, rose up, shot almost like the exact opposite side where Jordan was, and then just nothing but net. It's so similar synonymous with each other shot you know so yeah that is that is 100 percent the greatest San Diego State moment in the history of you know and and it's definitely top two or three in San Diego sports now if we think deeply into it it you know it's the magnitude too it's the magnitude yeah. that's why I say the Garvey one like maybe when they had seventh run seventh inning against the Dodgers last year the yeah. one moment is that and it's just like i freaked out man i was screaming my neighbors were like what's going on up there was everybody going and then the guys were like dude the aztecs are playing so it was i mean i can't even i know what i was feeling like but i can't imagine everybody i've talked to says they were rooting for san diego state everybody from you know what i mean yeah. and um but to be there and witness that that you guys don't know how lucky you are to see something like that i've been to a lot of sporting events dude a lot of sporting events that doesn't happen very often very very rarely there's there, you know, you get to the point in the game where you're watching it and you're like, there's that play where you're like, all right, we're going to be, you're not thinking of the moment when you look back, you're like, we're going to go super high or we're going to go real fucking low. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and when he hit it, I, I freaked out, man. Like I'm sure you guys did. I saw the videos and stuff like that, but everybody I talked to, even when I met the mountain West commissioner who was a really lovely woman. She was incredible. She's very nice. She said it was just like, I guess for the lack of a better term, just like an emotional bomb went off yeah. in that city and everybody went crazy. We, so I, I, I want to say that, that that moment lasted, it almost seemed like about 45 minutes to an hour because yeah. not only we were we like just celebrating for at least 10 to 15 minutes and after they got off the court, you know, in the stadium, but then the the celebration went into the concourse and we're all doing cheers and jumping up and down and hugging people and beer is being spilled everywhere. And <laughs> I mean, it, it was just a feeling I've never experienced at a sports sporting event. And like I said, it lasted for so long. I, I I'm just, I'm so grateful that I was there to experience it. I mean, it, 
I, I wish I could bottle it up and save it. Awesome. You know, the tournament sees a lot of upsets. It sees a lot of buzzer beaters. But in the final four, this is the highest stage. It's the biggest stage in that football arena. It just adds to the significance. And hey, man, it, it was great to see uh, a lot of the former show members. I know we saw, you know, <laughs> show alumni, all the different all the different uh, characters and cast and crew that, that are like the foundational pieces of the show. It was really cool to be seated up in that area to kind of see it for yourself and then to see the students the 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 current show down just going berserk and seeing all the videos afterwards you know it it was just a celebration man a celebration of this basketball program what coach fisher dutcher all the legends have been able to build over 20 some odd years and now we're at this point in a final four and man we almost got it done we're this close guys this close now, the game against UConn may have not felt or the score may have not indicated how close we were. UConn was a buzzsaw. They were destroying everybody in the tournament. I think everybody walked away from that game understanding and, and proud of, of that game as far as, okay, the better team won. You can accept that. Look back and appreciate the journey. An 11-minute scoring drought in that first half. Uh, wow. You know, I, I know we were capable of some you know scoring droughts before uh but this yukon defense was was something else and obviously showed to be something else but if there was one thing i'll ask each of you if there was one thing in this game that you would have done differently no i i mean i'm gonna tweak that a little bit because i i think yukon had it going that night and we just didn't I mean, how many shots went in and out of the rim for us, you know, that hit the rim, went in and out at least five or six that I saw, you know, and then, you know, they just, it was just their night. They were making shots that were great shots and we just couldn't make the shots. And, you know, I was listening to the interview with Jim Beheim, and he asked, you know, he's like, San Diego State's a great team. And they asked him about, you know, can defense only win? He's like, no, you got to score points, which I've kind of been saying, you know, at some point you, you can't, you're not going to win a national championship game with 59 points, unfortunately. But it just wasn't our night offensively, you know, and you can't go 11 minutes scoring, not scoring against them. But we still held it close. So um, I don't I don't think there was much difference you could have done, except maybe not have some of the some of the ticky tack fouls that were called against us. I hate to say it against the refs, but if if we're going to pinpoint something, you know, but in that same vein, they made 93 percent of their free throws. So they took advantage of our mistakes. So, you know, they, they won by an average of 20 points a game. So there's, you know, they, they ran through everybody, dude. So I don't, I don't know matchup wise that what I would have done differently because I don't know if it would have mattered to be honest with you. Well, I mean, you got to tip your hat to UConn. I mean, they, if you look at someone posted it on Twitter, like all the plays that they, they run, I mean, there's got to be at least what 30 some plays that they, that they run and they that they have in their playbook. I mean, we don't have we have a fraction of that. I mean, I, I, if we have like eight plays in our playbook, I'd be surprised. Um, but you know, you, hats off to them because they were running a lot of sort of uh, sets and screens, and it wasn't the first guy that was getting open or the second guy or the third guy. It was like that fourth and fifth. You know when they would run these sets, and then finally it would our defense would just break down, and they would get an open shot and then or, or they get a mismatch and we'd have like a small guy on a big and um you know they get an easy basket as a result of it and and really on the other end um we we just weren't that creative on offense and that's something that i've been saying all year i've, I've pointed to you know our, our our metrics and defense are elite we raised the bar for our metrics defensively during the tournament and i think that's what really what propelled us to on this run plus we got a little bit of luck you know getting um and and, and clutch performances right i got to give the kids credit um for closing out you know one point games in the elite eight and the final four but when it comes down to the creativity on offense and the you know we we just don't run a lot of uh, sets there weren't a lot of open looks for seiko um you know it, you, you know you get you're doing really good offense when you can get a guy like that who can't create his own shot open shots and i think for dutcher it's just a matter of uh 
it's sort of quality over quantity. He would rather them execute the plays better than to have an expanded playbook, you know, of plays. And so, I, I, I mean, unfortunately, um, it was, I thought it was a lot easier for UConn to defend. And uh, that's contributed to our scoring droughts and just bad, you know, and we had some bad shots as a result, some bad shot selection that caused um, buckets the other way, you know, uh, because we didn't, we didn't take good shots. So, but I mean, you got, look, despite all of that, we're fought within five with five minutes to go. I mean, we had a shot to win this game. And so all credit to these kids, man, and how hard they fought back and, you know, to get back in that game. And, and they just never folded ever, you know, in throughout this tournament when they got down. And um, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm so proud of this team. So in other words, to summarize all that, Fiend thinks we run an in and out style of offense. It's just hamburger, cheeseburger, fries, shake, no bacon. You don't get no onion rings in that sucker. It's just, just make it really, really good. It's simple, but perfect. Or you should make it perfect. So did you get a Whataburger? Did, did you get that Whataburger challenge, Fiend? I did not get the Whataburger. Man. Dang it, man. I... Okay, so... When it comes to the offense, <laughs> when it comes to the offense, um, I hear what you're saying, that freedom within the framework, right? That's what Steve Fisher established here. You play defense, you're going to get the time to play offense and have that freedom to play. So I don't think we're really going to see a team like this moving forward ever again. It'll be interesting to see what we do, what we bring in in the near future for as far as the transfer portal goes. Um, this this is going to get us in a situation where guys who knew about San Diego State that are defensive minds minded, but they can score a little bit more, a little bit more off offensive efficiency. That would be like, OK, maybe I will go to San Diego State. They can get to this. They can get over the hump. You know, in 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 the family bond that you see with San Diego and then Jawan Howard coming in. I mean, look at how long those those friendships have been, man. So this this that's what I thought of is you get to a final four. Dude, by the way, we never lost in March this year. We didn't lose yeah. one game in March. So we also finished number two in the country. That's the highest this has ever been. And I've I've heard people say that, you know, this this is I've said it. This is the best team. It might not be the most talented team we've ever had, but this is the most decorated team we've ever had. Yeah. And so they can never take that away from us, man. You know, as, as San Diego boys and, a, 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 you know, fiend, you are a, a um, honorary San Diego boy. Um, the chargers ripped our heart out. They absolutely ripped our heart out, but they could never take away those memories. These are memories that, you know, San Diego state's not going anywhere and they're, they're never going to go anywhere. Cause it's a, it's a university of San Diego state, right. Is they're never going to take these memories away from us, man. You never get, to lose these for the rest of your life. The friendships you had, the people you met, the things you got to do, the games you saw, this shot is just like, this is obviously, I think this is probably the number one game for me of all time. It bumped the New Mexico game to number two, you know? And so the transfer portal is going to be interesting to see um, what we can get. Maybe that's a little bit more than what we've have gotten. And that's not to belittle any of the guys before because they've been all been great. All the transfers are coming to San Diego State being really good. But there might be that extra guy that is not sure. He's like, okay, I'll go to San Diego State. I can score. I can play my defense. We can win some ball games. So I think that's going to be interesting to see how that matriculates throughout the end of, of, of this year into you know the, the uh, start of next year and who we can get because we lost a lot of big-time production. I believe the numbers uh, national title game was like 14 million on CBS viewers, which is yeah. it's one of the lower championship games. But when you look at the, the most recent years, it's been it's been in decline. But I mean, it's still higher than what, what did we say, Fiend? That game was still higher view than, than some of the most uh, the NBA finals games and some of the other big games around. So it just tells you how huge March Madness is and the NCAA tournament. So you're right, man. Um, you know, people are watching that game. They're watching this program now. It, it's got millions more viewers that know who San Diego State is, who know who Brian Dutcher is, who know what this program is capable of. And uh, I'm excited to see what happens from it. I'm excited to see what comes about it. 
think about all the the extra applications that they're going to get from out of state students and you know people across the country i mean really raising the profile i think that the university did a great job of really promoting this to get the fan base out so we could be seen on you know national television and people could you know it the the national um you know sports writers you know that they, they commented that this is a really impression showing by San Diego State, you know, and it was great what they did with the students and flying them out and giving them vouchers and, you know, it just everything I thought it was top notch what the university did. And I, um, hopefully this pays dividends for us moving forward, not only with the transfer portal, but also, you know, raising the, the number of applications we get and the interest in attending San Diego State and, and, you know, puts us, you know, into hopefully locks up a, a deal for a, a power six conference, you know, so we can get into a bigger conference and have more money. The big elephant in the room with the whole transfer portal thing is it's the wild, wild west with NIL, you know, and uh, San Diego State doesn't have the resources of a team like UConn or UNC, Kentucky, Duke, you know, and so it's tough to land those four five-star players who are transferring because we don't have the resources. So um, we'll see how that, you know, how that affects everything moving forward. But I think they've developed the right culture, the brotherhood, and that is going to be attractive to guys beyond what they could get financially, um, you know, that will bring some, some top talent here. Okay. Along those lines, you know, we talk about the transfer portal and, you know, immediately once the season ends, a lot of people are thinking about who's coming in, but also who may be leaving. You know, one of the things that was brought up by the media before FAU game was that there had been talks, rumors of people trying to poach some of FAU's players there during that time of the final four. I mean, do you guys potentially see any players from the Aztecs perhaps getting offers to go elsewhere or maybe even the staff? Because, you know, one of the word out there is that this staff is going to receive multiple, you know, position offers elsewhere, whether it's a, just a, just a step up. So, I mean, what do you guys think? What do you think, Fiend? Do you project any, any uh, movement? I mean, I can't say if there's going to be movement, but there's going to be talk. There's going to be offers, I think, that happen. But whether they take those offers, I, 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 I'm I, not going to speculate on that. I don't know. And I'm not going to single out anyone as potentially they might be leaving. But, you know, the, I mean, when you have success, of course, people are attracted to success. And they want those pieces on their team to so that they can have success. So um, I wouldn't be at all surprised if, you know, a lot of these guys are getting offers, you know, that are coming back, whether it's coaches or players. This Saturday night at Snapdragon Stadium, SDSU, are uh, they're opening the doors of the stadium and the parking lot to everyone to come down and they're going to have a big celebration for the team. I, I think it's the best way to do it rather than a parade. There was some chatter about that. So uh, I want to say, what is it, 630? They're going to open the doors. The program's going to start at 7.30. I think the gates open at about 4 in the parking lot. So we'll be out there tailgating. Definitely stop by. It's going to be pretty chill. We'll just have a good time to celebrate the team and, and just put a put a finishing touch to the season, to an amazing season, the most amazing season in basketball history. So, man, when you think about that first game against Charleston, you know, Matt Bradley putting up, what, 17 points. That game came down, came down pretty much down to the wire and, and took some some free throws to kind of put it out of reach. And then the Furman game, just complete domination. Uh, Micah Parrish was, was, you know, hitting his shot, hitting his threes, and the defense was just all over the place. And then we go to the Sweet 16 against Alabama. And, boy, Darian Tramiel came up pretty huge in that game, along with Nathan Mensah's defensive effort. Then it was on to Creighton in the Elite Eight in uncharted territory. and. We pulled it out. I mean, just a battle back and forth. Uh, Tramel with the game winner, free throw at the end. And, of course, the FAU game, the game that we'll always remember as the height of the tournament and Lamont Butler's buzzer beater shot. 
just there's going to be a lot to celebrate. It was an amazing run, amazing, amazing performances. And just, uh, hey, everybody on this team deserves some some praise, some credit, some congratulations from San Diego. You know, the guys that don't get all the mentions, whether it's, you know, the the brothers Tyler and Tristan Broughton, uh, you know, or, or, or a Kate Alger or uh, who, who else are we looking at? I'm looking at the Jared roster. Barnett. Jared Barnett. Cam Lewin. Cam He's Lewin. a walk in, walk in, walk on freshman from Chicago. Sniper, sniper from the outside. I mean, these are these are the 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 practice squad guys that are really putting in a lot of time and effort studying up and making sure the guys are ready. And then you got freshmen coming in like Miles Bird. You got guys like Demarche Johnson uh a lot elijah saunders who we all can't wait to see get on the court next year i mean these are talented young guys that this is an unbelievable experience your your first year at d1 and you're going to the final four everything that they're seeing and learning and picking up is going to benefit them just tremendously right okay so a little a little shot clock game for you guys before we wrap things up uh, i'll keep it short feet <laughs> When I when I read the name of this Aztec player, give me your first word or phrase you think about when I give you this player's name. Because every player on this team just, I mean, just so much character on and off the court, so much uh, talent. They, they've really paid their dues in this program some of these guys we've seen five six years the we've all really gotten to follow their journey and all of san diego is familiar with these names it's just it's just an amazing program so when i give you their name give me your first word or phrase or or description you think about mike i'm gonna give you kishad johnson just just humble hardworking, under the radar great kid you know that just he he always just kind of gets his his numbers and plays hard and and is there for his team and um just a a a great young man i'm gonna add in the human highlight film man he he reminded me like a dominique wilkins type just above the rim just devastating dunks fiend you got adam seiko smartest guy in the room i just think he's just like the most cerebral basketball player he's the most shot disciplined um efficient he just everything you want in a basketball player he doesn't have the most skill but he uses his mind you know and and his intelligence his basketball intelligence to get open and to um to hit his spots and uh, yeah what well, i mean it's one of my favorite one of my favorite aspects of all time uh, Adam Seiko, love the guy, love the guy. I, I'm and so you know, look, you say that the 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 shot clock's hitting, it's about to hit. Let's go. <laughs> I love Adam Seiko, man. I'm gonna miss him so much. <laughs> I agree with you, man. Uh, just hearing him talk, there's a lot of depth to his uh, to his answers, to his discussion, his perspective. Might have to see if uh, we can have a conversation. All right, Mike. The next name you got, Darian Trammell just i mean just the, the the what he did this season is pretty impressive changing teams coming to us and the way he was able to battle through some of his struggles um and come up in a big games when we needed him is i'm just really excited to see how he matures um i guess maybe not matures but but develops over the over another year in the program and get to see him play one more year because I think I think the sky's the limit for him on his you know his ability to score I think him and, and, and Lamont are gonna be a dynamic backcourt next year yeah he's a dog man he's a little dog man very excited to see him next year all right Fiend the next name up for you Matt Bradley silky smooth man that that guy had just he has one of the the most silky smooth shots I've seen. I mean, his form is perfect. Um, I, I just, he just, it's like he glides to the basket, you know? And another guy that I'm really gonna miss, I'm glad that we had him for two years. 
um, with this program. I'm so glad he transferred to San Diego State. And uh, another guy that we're really, really going to miss on the Mesa next year. And I wish him all the best moving forward into his pro career. Love the images showing him working with some youth as soon as he got back, man. And, and to know that it was an ongoing thing. Oh, man. That, to, those post-game press conference quotes of his, uh, man, his life was touched. And uh, uh, it's great to see he's touching other lives as well. All right, Mike. Micah Parrish, what do you got? Oh, man, dude, I can't wait for him to just – just. I, I can't wait to watch him play next year, dude. He's, I think hopefully he has two more years with him. And um, I just – I am really excited to see – what he can do him i think he, you know same thing as tremel what he can develop over the over another year in the program and his maturation you know we know he's defensively he's great on defense um and he, he's gonna be i think he's gonna be great man i think he's gonna be really one of the great ones that come through the program here so um I, I love watching him play ball i just love his tenacity and how he plays and and you know how he you know, he, yeah, he did give that little elbow to the guy, but you, sometimes you got to have that. And, you know, we went on a little run after that. You know, we went on like uh, whatever run out a minute or so after that happened against FAU. So, I mean, I just, I think the sky's the limit for him as well. Agreed, agreed. Definitely has that sniper capability. All right, Fiend, one of our favorites, Lamont Butler. Give it to us. I mean, he's clutch. But that's the only word that I can come up for him he's he's so clutch he was clutch twice this year hit two game winners i mean most guys dream of hitting a game winner in college he hit two and one of them was on the biggest stages ever in college basketball and will be etched forever in the minds of aztec fans and i mean if that photo is not hanging up someday at the college basketball hall of fame then something is wrong because uh, that that is a pretty iconic photo and um, memory that I have of him. I just, I, the guy is so clutch. The butler did it again. That's what I was screaming out as soon as he hit that shot going crazy. Word is I hear that uh, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that uh, ground floor murals, the one that do all those amazing murals around town, they got to get that shot somewhere, somewhere up if, if it's by campus or something. But on the oh, trolleys, I would love to see that. Put, put some on the trolleys. That would be awesome. OK. All right, Mike. Next up for you, Jaden Ledee. Oh, man. Like he is he I felt like he was a little inconsistent here and there. Um, but the talent he oozes is just incredible, man. Like he is. I mean, his mid-range shot, he get the basket, he, he is, he might be the, one of the most talented, raw, talented players that's come through this program in a long time. And I think he's only scratched the surface of how good he is going to be. Um, but his mid-range game is, is second to none. I mean, how many of those mid-range shots did he hit? And you know that that were big shots and rebounding and stuff like that. So I think he's gonna he's gonna really get better over this year. I think him, you know, with the other guys in the core is gonna be incredible. So I'm I'm excited to see him come back um, and for another year. And I mean, I, I I'm 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 predicting he probably be shocked if he's the MVP of of the Mountain West next year. He hit that big 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 bucket right before. Mm -hmm. uh we got the big stop against yeah, mid -range. fau mid -range. man yeah that mid-range clutch and to do it at home in houston all right fiend we got up for you nathan mensa the great wall of mensa man i mean between him and skylar spencer i'm having a hard time deciding like who was better in the middle as far as blocking shots. I mean, both were, I know Skylar Spencer has the all time blocks, um, you know, lead, but Nathan Mensa, man, he, he was so pivotal for us anchoring that defense down low. And actually not only just blocking stop shots, but his defensive versatility and being able to switch and guard smaller guards and, um, again another guy i'm really gonna miss um you know I, I think as he gets 
into his pro career, his offensive game is going to kind of catch up with his defensive game, and it'll, that that's an area that he will he will definitely improve. Um, but defensively, I mean, how big was he in this tournament with all those blocks, especially against Alabama, yeah. and um, <laughs> just another another clutch performer for the Aztecs. That game against Alabama, that celebration that we documented, man, I mean, that was just like another iconic moment for San Diego State in this tournament, man. Just such a heartfelt, touching, you know, moment that we shared with Coach Koo and, boy, ah, live on forever. Lastly is Agueca Rope, and I'll take this one because I, I think, man, Agueca is just just the, the perfect example of, of an Aztec player, man. He'd been through so much, so much injuries, you know, going from losing his potential scholarship, coming out of high school, and then to jump on with us, he saw something in San Diego State that, you know, totally changed his trajectory to come down here and to, to know all the, the ups and downs, the battles, the almost, you know, walking away from the game last season, for him to come back and, and to basically do load management in, in practices knowing that it's painful i mean playing through pain playing through uncertainty and for him to be he there was that there were times this season he was the best player on the court he was making all the right decisions all the right reads uh big on blocks you know obviously rebounds diving for balls and just making sure that this team was holding on to each possession i i can't say enough about him on the court but off the court you know you, you read about you know his lifestyle and, and his message and, and what he wants to put out there and you know i don't know if he's gonna pursue basketball after this amazing career and and fan favorite career but i know whatever he does man Aztec Nation, we got his back and hope to see him around hope to see him around the the program even more i'm sure we will but just a, an amazing competitor that that's what i could probably say is just a, an amazing competitor you guys got anything for Aguep? I'm gonna miss him, man. I miss all these guys, dude. Like Aguep, it just the, he was there what five years. Just just the stick to itiveness he had to continue to play and to you can just see how much talent he had considering all the setbacks he had and just um, this is a really special team, man. And you, you know, like you said, you don't get many teams like this, um, but the, the, you could see the camaraderie. And the joy these guys had playing together. And um it's it's gonna be tough to see not see these guys playing next year, man. It really is. I mean, Nathan's been there five plus, you know, five years, Seiko five, six, Aguex five, right? So Keyshot four. And it's just it's you know, you, you everything comes to an end. You know, don't be don't be sad it's over, be happy it happened. But you know, as you get older you know, you don't get many more opportunities to see teams like this as you age, you know, unless, you know, but it's, it's, this is a special squad and, and um, it'll be forever etched in our minds. And I know you guys, I mean, I can't tell you how many people were telling me we're rooting for San Diego state and they were so happy and um, you know, getting all the texts and stuff like this, because it is, you know, tradition truly does not graduate, man. And so it is cool. It is cool to see a team like this. And this is a bar that they've been set that, you know, we all know it doesn't happen very often. I mean, look at how many coaches have, ne have never been to the Final Four. Gene Cady, you know, um, what's uh, McDermott from Creighton, you know, guys like that. And so it's pretty interesting to see who hasn't. So it's it's a special run to get there. And and again, I mean, I you know, I love Steve Fisher, but I mean, you know, Dutcher's is, is awesome. Like, he's just an awesome dude and, you know, very humble. And um, it's good to see people of his ilk achieve the status and the go and the and the and the accomplishments you have by being humble and putting everyone up before him really um and that kind of shows in their team and he you know the team is always a reflection of their coach you know I, i'm not sad that we lost to yukon i'm sad that it's over i'm sad that this season is over this magical run is over I'm sad that I'm not going to see, you know, these guys in an Aztec uniform, some of them, ever again. And that 
that to me was kind of what was hard after the tournament. Not that we lost to UConn. Tip my hat to them. You know, we I felt like we we were winners because of where we got to, you know, in that tournament. And but just the sadness that hey, it's over and now. Um, as you know, we close a chapter on this team. We'll be starting a new chapter with a new team. You know, and, and these guys got to move on. They got lives. They got things that they got to do after after college. Um, but uh, I, you know, this will be. This is a very special team, and it, I will always remember this 2022-2023 Aztec team as being one of the best and one of my favorite. Well, I like this team we got as well, guys. I appreciate your dedication, you know, all the 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 games, recaps, previews of this journey of this season. You know, I was hesitant to to get this thing going. Sons of Montezuma kiss the rings. So I appreciate you, Mike, for uh, pushing me to do it. And Fiend, you jumping on, you know, kind of the last uh, the last hour there, just jumping on, and and I I think it was a a perfect fit for this team. This uh team that is growing and expanding and you know hey after after one one season full season of aztecs basketball we sure picked the right one to do it didn't we yeah. <laughs> oh guys as we conclude this season it's not over hey transfer portal in the off season keeps the things going keeps things interesting but we're definitely going to be transitioning in, into a, a different different type of podcast that you guys may be hearing in the near future so Man, keep the, the hot topics coming and, and the interviews and, you know, we'll get together, guys, and talk some more hoops and, and kind of see how things are going as, as we transition into the uh, into the off season. I can't wait for Saturday. That's going to be fun. I'll see you there at the tailgate. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks to all the fans who came up to us at the games and for listening and, and, and supporting us. And, you know, I know I have a blast with these two guys. Um, and, and the other guys, but we really appreciate you guys listening to us and, and um, supporting us. So it does mean a lot. So, you know, if you ever see us, you know, come say hi. All right, guys. Well, all right. Time to move on. Time to celebrate one last time and then time to move on because the ball keeps bouncing. It keeps rotating. On behalf of uh, all the guys here at SunsMontezuma.com and the Kiss the Rings crew, Mateo San Diego, thank, thank you guys for joining us on this incredible Final Four journey. Go Aztecs. Go Aztecs. Go Aztecs. Go Aztecs. And when you hear done, it all means this. We game time ready. Welcome to my gym where the crowd stays heavy. Keep the bus running because it's going to take long. Four minutes left. Here the show still going.